Welcome to the Picking Nerds, and it's time for us to talk about some of our personal commander decks. It's our worst commander decks. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us Linear Picking Nerds. We got videos every single day. If you want to support us, you can go to patreon.com. There's a link in the description and wonderful people scrolling on screen right now. Yes, and if you want to be one of them, like Jonathan Lester, you can go over to the site using the link in the description, as BZ said. We love all of our patrons as much as we can without making them uncomfortable. BZ, if they don't want to support us directly via patreon.com, what else could they do? They can do it indirectly by buying the cards they were going to buy anyway on tcgplayer.com with our link. They just click and navigate the site, and then once they check out, we get money from TCG Player, not them, same price for you, and Dragon Shield, the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. So when you buy that stuff, you're supporting the channel at the same time as buying yourself some cool stuff. Yes, and if you didn't know, now you're about to know, because guess what, BZ? What? Well, well we are sponsored by Moxfield, and there's an ad in this video that they could never predict the location of. Yeah, I wouldn't even try. Uh, if you do try, I will tell you that you're wrong because you won't get it. You will be 100% wrong and happy birthday to everyone whose birthday is today. Woo! We're through that. All right, BZ, what are we doing today? It's the decks that we took apart, the decks that didn't work, our worst commander decks, the stinkers, the failed projects. I figured yes. we've never done anything like this. So Every single one of these decks, I think we've put together in paper. Um, yes. I think so, yeah. Literally every one of them is a deck that we've put together in paper and taken apart for one reason or another. We're going to go over these decks, talk about them, and just say what we didn't like about them. So I know at least for me, it's five and five. Five decks and five decks. Yep. For me, all five reasons are different. Yes. Uh, yes, they're all different for me as well. So let's start with my first one. It's our Katie's Walls. This is a very popular strategy, actually. Uh, Arcades is the wall commander at this point. Uh, there's no other commander that's competing with him because he just lets walls attack. For me, the deck built itself. And when I started playing it, I didn't feel like it was very exciting. It was it was very, the, the gameplay was very linear for me. Now, that's not to say that this deck isn't fun to a lot of people. What happens is you go Arcades, wall draw, wall draw, wall draw. And that's just kind of the pattern for the rest of the game until you either win via your giant walls attacking or you just get board wiped over and over again and you do nothing. Yeah, it feels pretty on rails. I've definitely played a few games against Arcades and it kind of just went like, it's tough to close the game when you just kind of have to wait for your walls to attack and maybe you have like tower defense or something and you just get board wiped and you're like, well, I drew a bunch of cards, so I'm going to replay everything. And you get board wiped. You're like, well, I drew a bunch of cards, so I'm going to replay everything. And then I'll wait a couple turns. And it's just like, to me, I would never build this deck. But I get that Joe did, and it just seems like that's the problem. Like, on rails, not, like, where is the room to be creative here? I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. This is kind of one of my problems with um, tribal decks overall. This, this It kind of encompasses a whole thing where tribal decks really kind of build themselves for the most part. You really don't have as many flex slots as you do with many other decks. Like, any oh, other deck, really. Like, yeah, any other deck. You really get a lot more flex slots, and you just have to put like, you know, 30 plus of the tribe usually. you At least you want to try to so that you can keep your tribe going. I'm going to try Giada Angels. I went back to that deck. Uh, I built it. It didn't look fun. And I look back and I'm like, this looks interesting. Maybe I'll give this one a try. Okay. Okay. My next one or my first one is Adelie's the Cinderwind, uh, aka Don't Hinder the Cinderwinder, which for the name alone, I had to build it. But it's like Wizard Tribal, which I was, I've tried to build so many times. This is the most recent one. Wizard Tribal and also like Spell Slinger because... You want to give all your wizards plus one plus one. And so it's like, oh, can I find the balance between wizards and instant sorceries? No, I couldn't. And that's basically why I had to just cut this thing. I tried so many different variations. I just couldn't get it to where I had a bunch of wizards that I was happy attacking with and pumping up. And I had a bunch of spells that I was happy playing. I just could not do it. It basically ended up being some kind of weird omniscience deck where it's like, oh, when I play omniscience, I win. Uh, yeah, I remember you played this deck. Um, and it was fine to play against mostly. But it either did nothing, it was really slow, really just not a great deck, or it kind of popped off once every like seven or eight games. And that's that was generous because the deck rarely ever popped off because sometimes your draws are, oh, wow, I drew all wizards and no spells. Or I drew all spells and no wizards. So, can't tripping into nothing. So the deck is doing nothing. Um, it's tough to balance that out. Not to mention the side uh, quest of just being completely miserable with like Void Mage Prodigy or Patron Wizard to where if you just untap with wizards, you can't lose. 
because you counter every spell that they ever play. Yeah, I don't like either of those wizards. I think oh, I love Patron Wizards. It's so miserable, though. I, I think both of those uh, both of those wizards are the reason I don't like wizards very much. They're just not a fun tribe. You have to, like, exclude those cards. And then there's, like, Galecaster Colossus 2, where it's just, like, all your wizards bounce something yep. to tap, and you're never going to resolve anything. Yeah, also not a fan of that. Next was another one of my decks, Yuriko. Now, this deck... I started, I'm like, yeah, Yuriko seems fun. I want to do a ninja theme. And I did mostly ninjas. I had a good ninja count. But the deck was, it's, the problem is Yuriko is a broken design, right? Um, there's no way to stop this stupid card because it always costs two from the command zone. So it's like, if you attack with a 1-1 one, one that's unblockable in this, they can't just, like, and Yuriko's getting through. It's like, they can't kill Yuriko. It's useless because you'll just put it in through the 1-1. One, one. This made for unfun games all the time. And I feel like you have to deeply power down Yuriko for it to be fun at all, in my opinion, because you end up just taking 10 extra turns because Yuriko's incredibly strong with extra turns. I mean, even just like, oh, you know, I'm, I've am i got my Sensei's Dividing Top out, and I'm like, here's C8 Restoration, lose 7. And it's just like, even fair or random stuff adds up. And you just, you just, you're the first deck on board every single game, no matter what. The first thing that happens that game, no matter what, is they're going to try to figure out how to answer Yuriko. Now, I will say that I did figure out how to make this deck fun, and it was just to play Satoru Umazawa. That, the, that, the fun Yuriko deck for you is Satoru Umazawa. Yeah, I think I made that deck a lot. It's a lot more fun, especially, like, I did tune it down, and I took out, like, extra turns and stuff. And I think, like, it's a, it also lets you play big, stompy, and fun stuff. like Commander tax? Commander tension? Tax, exhaust. There's tension, yes. Uh, Yuriko's in the deck, uh, but it's a lot more fair. Like, sometimes you're still flipping seven eights, and you're getting, like, you're hitting your opponents, but that's not every game, like, you the original Yuriko. That card is so good. Yeah, I also want to say, you know, maybe midway through is not the best time for this disclaimer. It's not like any of these decks are objectively bad. They didn't oh, work for us. Not. They're like our worst failures because we couldn't make it work and it wasn't interesting to us. Yes, that's pretty important. We Ex tried Except for this next one, which was a complete success and everybody else was complaining about it. It's Emery Lurker of the Lock, one of my all-time favorite decks. It was just self-mill, kind of, but with no mill cards. It was like, I'm just going to play all my cards which naturally mill me and draw me cards and like put cards in my graveyard. And then the only win con is Nexus of Fate. So eventually I'll have no cards in my deck and I win with Nexus of Fate, infinite turns and ham sandwich, especially with Emery. You can just cast your whole graveyard and you don't even need anything. You can win with like a one, one. Uh, so that was awesome to me. Turns out not very fun to play against because it's like counter spells and it's completely inevitable and there's not really any way to interact. Yeah. The deck was pretty lame. I just didn't like, I played against it many times. It was the dreaded deck when he pulled out because it's just not fun. All it did was counterspell stuff that was good, draw cards, really didn't do anything. Like, the deck didn't do anything. And so it never drew hate, and it was like a progress bar that you could see my deck. It's like, oh, well, we didn't answer. We didn't, like, kill BZ randomly because he didn't have anything on board. But he got 20 cards in his library, so we lose. Yeah, it forced unfun play patterns. Like, the, the way to play against the deck is to bully absolutely me. bully him out of the game uh, by turn seven, and then everyone else gets to play the game after yeah. that. Yeah. But that's if we don't. But if we do that, then it's not fun for BZ. And if we don't do that, then it's not fun for anyone else. See, it would be fine for me. I understand that needs to happen. It just didn't happen. So it just ended up not being a fun deck to. I think bust if, out. I think if everybody, uh, like, if every time we sat down and everyone knew that, you would have taken apart the deck as well. I might have. It just would have been faster. It, yeah, taking it, apart versus like. Yeah, because you wouldn't have been having fun in that case instead of everyone well, else. I, I'd be like, I get it. I would understand. Yeah. All right. Moving on to my next deck, we have Omnath, Locust of Creation. This is the four mana Omnath. It's a land. It was a landfall deck, and my biggest issue was this deck was very repetitive because of the amount of searching, and the amount of searching was absurd. You play every single fetch in this deck. You have to. You well, have, you don't have to, but you should. You should. Like you really should play every single fetch in this deck. You're searching nonstop. So much ramp, and it's all good and dandy, but. The games got very repetitive. I mean, me. you were searching your library four times by, like, turn three. You're always searching your library. You have ten fetches. At ten least, fetches. right? I mean, you have all ten pay one life fetches, and you can play more if you want. You can, and, but I was playing ten. So I had ten of all the fetches. It, the deck was... Now, to be clear, the deck was strong. The deck was good. It was a field of the dead deck. I searched it, a it field. It wasn't unfun to play against. It was fine. It was like, as long as you can handle a little bit of field of dead spam, it's not... It's not unbeatable. No, it, it was a fine deck. It just, it, what got really boring to me was searching my library 10 times a game over and over 10 again. 10 times is pretty low. And and, and always it kind of spam the same idea. Um, and this might be a lack of direction that I had because I really didn't know what to do. It's like I played a bunch of landfall cards. It's like I didn't know what to do after I, I got going. It's like I made a million mana. It's like if I wanted to win, the best thing to do would actually be to play expropriate. Right, but then it's like... 
where's the landfall? It's like, what? Why am I playing a landfall deck? I mean, it was just, it was a tough balance for me, and I couldn't get it to a spot where I was happy with it. That's fair. Yeah, I'm not this. I, the four color decks is a problem for me because it just gives me too much, too many options. It, it does. Um, I think something that you can do with four color decks to help you is focus on two colors. Yeah. Uh, specifically, make it more of a two color deck that branches out a little bit. That was definitely more of a blue green deck. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It was hugely blue green. Uh, not really planned or anything, but my next deck was a four color deck. This deck was probably built around five or six years ago as a reference. It's Saskia Humans. And the reason I just couldn't keep it together, couldn't handle it, is the lack of support. Humans are kind of a recent thing. Before we went back to Innistrad, we didn't have a whole lot, even Aquaria. This was way before that. And it was just like, hey, here's the humans. And there's like literally five payoffs in the deck, and two of them say the word humans on it. And the rest of them are just like, you know, from like commander products that just say, choose a creature type. And it's just, I was just like, well, what? It's just all the humans. What? There's no, I don't feel like this cohesive, it's just random cards. Sometimes you win, but it didn't feel special. It didn't feel like it was a, a unit. It was yeah. just like a bunch of random dudes. I agree with you. Uh, Saskia Humans was a fun deck, but it, like you said, it lacked direction. Humans didn't have the puzzle and puzzle kind of direction that they have now. They do much better with that. They didn't have payoffs. They didn't have payoffs. Now humans have all that. So it's like, maybe if you went back to this deck, it might be good now. See, now it's like, I almost don't want to go back to it because it feel like it would be super on rails. Maybe yeah. the opposite. It's the opposite problem now. I have no yeah. direction. Like, I have no freedom. Yeah, that deck was a long time ago. And you said not coincidence, but also not a coincidence. My next deck is four colors. Whoa. And it is Brea who is, you know, obviously the Artifact Commander, lots of infinite combos, but that's not the way I went with it. I went Artifact Creatures. On board. On board, Artifact Creatures, and it was a fine deck. It could not finish the game, and I couldn't come up with ways to finish the game, and because the because the deck just struggled every time in that area, I was just like, I'm taking this apart. It doesn't, I can't finish the game. I don't want to sit here, and, like, when my deck pops off and does all of its stuff, I don't win? Well, no, I don't want to be the doing it. The deck had Sol Ring and Mana Crypt in it. And metal, maybe Mox Opal, I don't remember, but you had fast mana, so you would start off these games where you're like, turn two, Brea, turn three, this, this, and then play like Urza, and then activate Urza three times, and then it's like you get board wiped, and you're actually just back to everywhere what everybody else is. Yeah, you exactly. did nothing. Yeah, the deck just didn't work. It, it could not put away the games. The creatures, the artifact creatures weren't big enough, they weren't strong enough, there wasn't enough ways to sneak them through, so it just led to me poking in for one damage with my 1-1 one, one Thopters over and over. And drawing again. a card. And drawing card. Playing with another 1 1. With my Thopter Pi network. Yeah, exactly. But, so, Brea, I wonder. Well, I don't wonder. Four color for me is just so tough to do. I need the heaviest of restrictions. Like, I actually built a five color deck that I like and has stayed together and probably will continue to stay together because I'm so restricted. I'm It's Niv Mizzet, only multicolor cards, and also Gigantha as the companion. Brea is. I restricted myself a lot with Brea. And you I did. It just didn't work enough. I couldn't put away games. I need to. I. Need to be able to win games. Usually, in like, that deck really wanted combos. It did, and I don't. And that wasn't what I was looking to do. It's like I wasn't looking to combo with it. Brea obviously can combo off with a ham sandwich. She's amazing. We got to do a deck deck with ham sandwich. With ham sandwich yeah. as the commander at some point. All right. Well, number eight is uh, not actually. It's one of BZ's decks. Yes. And one that I use because it's Moxfield.com. It's not actually a deck. It's a website that you, holds your decks. Your fools. Yes, that holds every single one of your decks. Uh, a lot of these, de most of these decks aren't on there because this was before. They're These old. decks are too old. Predate Moxfield. Moxfield is a new, hip, easy to use website. Moxfield.com, that is. And you can use it to put all your decks in there. Seriously, intuitive, easy. Every nitpicky nerds deck on there. Go ahead and follow us and see all the decks we're playing currently. Every deck that I'm currently playing says Joe's. Current uh, list. Joe's current. And I say BZ's current list. And it says BZ's current list. And then if I have taken apart, it says retired. Retired. <laughs> it's retired. Redacted. <laughs> All right. That's 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 our Moxfield ad. Ad you, of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. And I know you didn't predict it. So my number eight for real Z's is Archangel Avison. It's the ETB creature indestructible, flips when something dies, it deals three to everything. Super cool card. One of the coolest flavor cards. So I was like, let's do some kind of like flavor deck. And it was, ended up being like this, I just checked it the other day, and I was like, what was I doing? And I was like, oh, okay. I wrote a little blurb in the description, so I was like, oh, okay. It was like flavor based on like the story of Innistrad, so a lot of Innistrad cards. And then also like a Boros graveyard deck, because I love graveyard decks. And that is easily the thing that just killed this, because it just, it was like, what am I doing? Why is this card in over this card? I just couldn't justify anything, and it was just fell apart, because it's like, this deck stinks. 
How do I make it better? I don't know, because I have this weird flavor restriction, and to me, it didn't work. Yeah, I don't have much memory of this deck. I do remember you having it, but I don't remember playing against it at all. I barely remember playing it, but I know I played at least 20 games with it. Yeah, Avacyn's a really cool and unique card that is super flavorful. One of my favorite cards ever printed that. Arch Archangel Avacyn, literally one of my favorite Perfect cards. Perfect design. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, no, it's not, because the only thing it does stupid is that there's no marking on the front that it's red. Oh yeah, it's one of the it's one of it's the only thing about the card that I actively it might be the hate. only transform card like that too. Yeah, it it is the only transform card like that where there's just it's uh, white on the front, red on the back, and there's no way to know unless you flip over the card. Yeah, and we had it in our commander cube, and nobody could tell. Is this oh my god? Yeah, they put in their mono white decks like nope, nope. you see can't the, do see that. the back side. <laughs> so yeah, Archangel Everson flavor deck. If I'm going to return to a flavor deck, I'm gonna have to figure some kinks out. Yes, that's fair. Uh, my last deck here was Grixis Steal Your Stuff. And now I love playing cards that steal my opponent's stuff. But what I decided at the end of this, I, this deck literally came apart like two, three weeks ago, not long ago now at all. Um, I wasn't going to this deck at all to play. Uh, one of the issues is, one, you actively steal cards back. So, uh, it is, I flip over cards and I still end up with cards in my deck. I just had to ship, ship one to a friend. Uh, and, like, I'm paying money out of my pocket because I'm accidentally taking cards and shipping them back. And didn't you also, <laughs> you took one from other content creator, Giraffinat, right? Yes, that's the one I'm shipping back. Okay, that's who it is? That, yeah, actually, that is the, uh, you know, the letter that came back downstairs I didn't put the number on? That letter downstairs that I have to ship is to Giraffinat. Uh, and I have, it was her aestheticism. I take no responsibility. It is always 100% my fault. And But besides that, that's a, min, that's a mini problem that is avoidable if you're a smart human who can, you know... You look at the back of cards to tell it's not yours. Regardless of all that, the deck was weak. Uh, there's no underlying theme. You couldn't get going. You couldn't close. It's so slow. Um, and one of the one of the biggest issues is if you don't draw your ramp in this deck, it doesn't do anything because half the cards in the deck, like you pay for their cards. They're like random spells, like Chaos One. It's like seven mana for I don't know. Yeah, and all the best cards cost seven eight mana. Every single one of them. And like. The deck was fine, and it was fun. Oh, it definitely fun. I, I don't even think it was that bad to play against. I, like, I had no problem playing against it. It was, but my problem, I just took it apart because it's like I didn't pull it out because it's like I, I like trying to win. I like competing, and this deck never felt like it competed. It felt like it was kind of off doing its own thing. Exactly. It's like it's trying, and it won sometime. And it's, I think as soon as I cut expropriate, you know, the best card of the deck by a it stopped mile, winning it ever. Stopped winning ever. So it's like, wow, well, I'm not gonna play this deck then. That's fair. All right, and my last one. Is Mazarek Crowl Death Priest. So the actually the one deck on Moxville that I haven't updated yet, just haven't gotten around to it, is the Skullbriar deck. It's mostly the same. I built a Skullbriar deck, loved it. I love that card. I love the counters plus Voltron plus this card is really goofy and there's weird things to do with it. Loved it. But I was also I had Mazarek in that deck and I was like, man, Mazarek's really cool. So what I did, what I regret doing, is taking apart the Skullbriar deck, turning it into a Mazarek deck, and then I was playing the Mazarek deck, and holy crap, Mazarek is a 99 only card because as soon as it was my commander, it was miserable and I had no fun at all. The problem with Mazarek is just it's a must answer. If you don't answer Mazarek, it quickly runs away at the game. If there's four or five creatures on the board, suddenly all those creatures are 10 tens. See, that wasn't my issue. I was ready for that. It combos with everything, it combos with a ham sandwich. If you have any persist creature in your deck, sack outlets, like depending on the types of ways to sacrifice permits, like it just goes infinite super easily. Not okay. That's yeah. like not what I wanted. Yeah, Mazarek is. I mean, I've not seen another Mazarek deck since yours, so I don't know if that's inherently an issue. If you can build the deck without it, I'm sure there's some ways to build. I mean, it's just like Mazarek is in play for one second. You either win or he's dead, and it was like so strong it was boring, and I didn't actually get to take advantage of Mazarek being cool. Yeah. So, Back in the Skullbriar deck with you. So if you want to make some new decks, because maybe you took apart some of your decks like we did ours, you can check out some of our 10 unique deck idea videos. We have a bunch of them. BZ's got one of them on the screen. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.